the first question I know you I know you address it on your uh, campaign uh, website, um, but whether you win or uh, Mr. DeFore wins, it's going to be the first person of color to hold elected statewide uh, office in Pennsylvania, which is uh, which is fantastic. I mean, in my opinion, yeah. uh, what does my opinion matter though? <laughs> Um, but um, I'm, I'm wondering what this means to you, what the significance of that is to you. Uh, absolutely. This is, um, you know, pathbreaking in Pennsylvania to have either one of us um, and to have me uh, add to that a person of color, a woman. Uh, we don't have anybody in our statewide executive offices um, currently who's a woman and haven't had for a little while. Um, I also uh, am a scientist. We've never had a scientist in statewide executive office. And in this day and age when, um, you know, we have uh, science being called fake news, it is critical that uh, we have someone who can uh, give the facts, follow the money, uh, and be uh, very objective about things. Uh, and finally, I'm an immigrant, and uh, we need to change the narrative about immigrants, uh, about what we bring to the table, uh, how much we contribute, and just in myself running and running for this office and coming this far, actually showing how much of the fabric of this country and this state we are. So my uh, candidacy and uh, hopefully uh, my win will actually signal even many more things uh, in addition to being a person of color. Why does being a scientist, what role does being a scientist play uh, when you're talking about the position of Auditor General? Uh, it's critical to look at the data that we collect in this office. I'm trained to analyze data. I'm trained to uh, collect and make data accessible and you know, make the paradigm information equals power actual, real for people. And um, this office is really a data office because it collects with every audit, whether it's a, um, a performance audit or a financial audit, we are collecting information about the entity we are auditing. Uh, that, that speaks to not just their balance sheet, not just uh, how, what integrity they have had in you know, using the money, shape, keeping the money, what internal controls have been in place, but it's actually showing how the money is used and how the money is used, where is it going? When you match that up with the needs in whatever institution or, or organization we're looking at, is those meeting those needs. And that's where the power of analysis is really important. And the other thing is, when you have 67 state, uh, counties, you want to take a look across to see uh, how a particular issue is being handled and if there's appropriate funds going to those issues. So this becomes a very powerful position uh, to not only inform Pennsylvanians, but also our legislature and our remaining executive branch. I know uh, you, you ran for uh, Lieutenant Governor, um, and I'm wondering why you are running for Auditor General. So if you notice, both of those are statewide uh, offices. Um, and I was really looking to make a difference, a positive difference, bringing in progressive change in a statewide 67 county manner. And um, this office is even, I believe, a better fit for me. This is an independent office where I'm accountable only to Pennsylvanians. Um, and I'm deeply interested in not only accountability and transparency, but also how equitably we are using our dollars. And that's been my track record, my history, um, you know, especially you know, holding the powerful accountable. Uh, and here, this is a perfect position that allows me uh, to do that on behalf of the people of Pennsylvania. I know you mentioned uh, your progressivism, and uh, what role in your mind does party politics um, play in a position like Auditor General? Um, actually, none. <laughs> um, you know, this is a once you're elected, you're serving everyone. But what's important and, and the, rela uh, the relationship with the party is the values that I bring, right? What are the things that I care about in this office to use this uh, effectively? And again, it's equity. It's, uh, that is a very democratic value with a small d. And uh, I think we need to be clear that some Pennsylvanians are doing very well uh, and most Pennsylvanians are not. And this pandemic has actually showed the cracks in our the communities and how underserved uh, many communities are. And my goal is to make sure I use the hashtag leave no one behind is exactly do that to make sure we have a government uh, that sees and serves everyone. How, uh, what, what 
in your career, what have been your key accomplishments that make you most qualified for the position of Auditor General? Um, you know, having served as the first Asian American deputy mayor uh, in a Philadelphia cabinet, having established the Department of Public Engagement, we didn't have one. And that really is a reflection of public policy about, again, representation. And um, I think I bring the skill set of not only making sure there were all voices at the table, but I also bring the analytical skills of looking at the budget as a moral document, because as a cabinet member, we had to look for efficiency, efficiencies across the board in all the departments, particularly being public engagement, we intersected with everyone. So when the mayor's priorities of universal pre-K and uh, community schools and rebuild were underway, we, I was one of the integral people looking across the board to see how would that impact uh, these other departments, who, how will they be involved, and how can we make efficiencies to make these priorities happen. So that gives me a huge platform. It was over a $4 billion budget. Um, and of course, my other, uh, you know, I'm a small business owner. I have to operate in a finance and audit environment. Compliance is very big. Uh, so I have that experience on the other end of uh, who faces the audits. Uh, and uh, finally, my civic responsibilities where I served uh, President Obama as a commissioner on the Asian, National Asian American and Pacific Islander Commission, which was a great honor, but also it showed me upfront how public policy is made at a public as at a federal level. And remember, we have oversight over federal dollars. So giving feedback to our federal government about the use of their dollars is something that this office can do as well. And finally, my big, uh, you know, having served in the Philadelphia Foundation, uh, both as a grant making chair where we put out $40 million annually uh, into the economy, as well as being on the investment committee and safeguarding that half a billion dollar in, uh, endowment and making it grow responsibly. But I think one of the key issues for me is matching this all with my advocacy work about being uh, involved with the National Organization for Women. And that comes from my history of living through a war and watching uh, 3 million people die during the independence of the country called Bangladesh and 200,000 women and girls were brutalized. So that has taught me to stand up for those who are oppressed to because I stand here today because of their sacrifice. Similarly in this country, I stand in the sacrifice of those, particularly the African American uh, community that allows me to be here today. So all of this put together, a very broad experience uh, <laughs> to really serve uh, the people of Pennsylvania. Uh, what, um, what is your business, just out of curiosity? It's a community development finance business. Got so, it, yeah. okay. Um, what change do you bring from the current Auditor General's office? So I build on the legacy of our current Auditor General. Uh, you know, things, my issues I've spoken on the trail is about healthcare, for example. And one of the uh, you know, specific issues in there is to see how we reduce the price of drugs that you have to pay at the pharmacy. And that is a very murky uh, position called the pharmacy benefits managers. This current Auditor General has actually um, you know, looked at that and as a result of his work, there's bipartisan bills on the floor. I want to continue working on that, making sure that we make uh, those of our uh, Pennsylvanians on fixed incomes like our seniors and others to be able to afford their, uh, their, med their medicine and be a healthy Pennsylvanian. Um, so things of that nature, you know, He's done a charter school review, which was very uh, detailed, and Governor Wolf is picking those up and has put them in executive orders, but I need to look at how we make them permanent, working with our legislature. Uh, you know, this is a leadership job, so you have to interact and take the work of this office and make it useful to the rest of Pennsylvania through our legislature and through our executive branch. So there's, I will be building on his legacy. Uh, if elected, what do you, as the state's fiscal watchdog, need to address first in office? So, you know, everything is going to be looked through a pandemic, a post pandemic or current pandemic lens, right? Uh, our whole state has literally been shut down, um, even though now we're doing, you know, going places and doing things. And that is because there's been a failure of the federal government. So we had to scramble and do things on our own. There was no central command in the entire country giving us direction like it had been in a previous administration where we've had these kinds of issues and never had to do Zoom with you. I would be in, in person sitting with you and talking. Um, so 
one of the big things is when there's such a large influx of money coming in because of the pandemic relief, that's when fraud and abuse is at its highest. And I think we need to put in uh, many different measures. Of course, we'll have to talk with our professional staff, our CPAs and our auditors uh, to actually look to see how do we do some real time audits in some certain specific places to make sure we don't have fraud and abuse because we've already seen that happen. We've had uh, incarcerated uh, members of uh, uh, prison uh, getting uh, unemployment. Uh, so we really have to take a hard look at the immediate and near future to make those changes. But I actually am, have proposed we do a pandemic preparedness audit, which will take all the best practices that we have seen and, and see what to avoid and build a, a preparedness a situation where we can respond to this kind of a crisis if it happens again and I'm pretty sure it will because the globe is so small and you're spreading disease very fast uh, so my biomedical hat gets on we're gonna have an educational piece a healthcare piece and an economic piece built into that uh, audit uh, of our preparedness so you know long term and short term the COVID pandemic is gonna drive many of the decisions uh, I want to uh, have some fun uh, with these next few questions, and uh, they're rapid fire, so try your best to answer them uh, as uh, quick as possible. Again, they're entirely uh, fun here, so uh, I'll start with this, because I know you're, uh, you have spend most of your time in Philadelphia. How long have you been living in Philly? 37 years old. Okay, all right, so, so that's enough to ask. What is your favorite food spot outside of Philadelphia? Outside of Philadelphia. Um... Food spot outside of Philadelphia is um, all over the state. All over the state. Uh, in the Poconos, there is a um, place where there's a terrific um, uh, corned beef sandwich. And I can't think of the name because it's put on the trip. I can get that to you. But I am a, a big favorite <laughs> of <laughs> brisket corned beef sandwiches uh, or pastrami. And that was the freshest, it was on the road, freshest, best, and I'm trying to get back to it. And okay. I, I have to get the name from it. Actually, my daughter has the name for it. <laughs> all right, all right, let's, let's pick it up here. Uh, back to Philly, yeah. with or without? Uh, with. Best concert you've been to? Um, best concert is um, the, um, oh gosh, this is escaping me. <laughs> uh, I would say an Aretha Franklin, but oh. there's, 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 there's many. Oh, that's a great answer. Uh, one place in Pennsylvania that you have not been to yet, but you need to see. I need to go to um, Johnstown. Um, uh, I mean, I need to go to a lot of places because the pandemic has shut things down. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also monroe county i haven't been to monroe county well sorry sorry excuse me i have been to monroe county because i've gone to a uh, university there but uh, there are some specific spaces um i would like to go um to look at frank lloyd wright's falling rock um uh, architecture there's quite a few very significant places in pennsylvania i, I worked in johnstown for eight years so when you get out there i'll, I'll be your guide uh if okay. if you yeah if you weren't in politics uh if you weren't doing this what would you be doing right now i would be involved in some public service uh using my scientific skills uh to really pay it forward i am very very fortunate to live in this country to be is this is my adopted home and payback and you know making paying it forward actually is really important for me so i would be doing something in a public service that uh uplifts people last question um with this whole thing are, are you confident in the safety and security of the results on election night Yes, I think we have uh, our board of elections across all the 67 counties have been working very hard. We've had a trial run with the primary uh, and we did it. You know, we were successfully, uh, you know, produced the results. And uh, I think with a lot more oversight and knowing what we need to do better and the best practices from June 2nd and prior to that, I think we're ready. Um, we have to be very vigilant that there are no mischief makers, <laughs> and, but we have to give people the confidence that th their vote counts and it will be uh, sacrosanct. And uh, I have full faith in um, 
you know, our Department of State <clears throat> to be able to oversee this entire process.